It's one of the most amazing success stories in all of general aviation. Not in a number of decades have we seen a general aviation company arise out of nowhere and take over a market segment, as has Robinson Helicopter. From the original R-22 that I flew many, many, many moons ago, got my CFI helicopter in and worked all the way through a number of different iterations of the 22 to the 44 and now the 66. The Robinson success story is almost myth in the rotorcraft world. But the myth has become, or is in the process of becoming, the legend. The R66 is Robinson's first turbine. Over the years, everybody asked Frank Robinson, when are you going to do a turbine? And the constant stock answer is, when I can do it right. Folks, let's come along with, on a test flight of the R66. Let's see if Frank got it right. And I'll tell you what, there's no betting against Frank Robinson in the rotor business. Come along and find out with us. Tower Southeast departure approved, taxiway Alpha eastbound approved. Over Alpha eastbound, I want to go. I'm going to start pulling up to 100%. Gotcha. Make sure you're allowed to go for five minutes. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot smoother than the 44, it's definitely faster, and of course inside it's much quieter. Turn right base, runway one one left, take correction, runway one one right, go for the option. Point to golf, Roger, The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Doug, we've just spent uh, the better part of an hour with me in the right seat of an R66. Now, from a flying quality standpoint, it's 44 only better. And, uh, of course, the only other transition, of course, is learning to operate a turbine engine. That's correct. The uh, turbine is a lot more expensive if you hot start it and uh, as opposed to an overspeed. And if you have any, you know, amount of time in the 44, the transition will be pretty simple. You saw yourself how easy the start was. What is the training curriculum like right now? If somebody comes in and they've got a fair amount of 22 or 44 time, or for that matter, either or, how is that transition accomplished? What are you doing with those people? How long does it take? And what's the experience been so far so early in the program? We have a training program that we've put on CD, and we mail that out to the pilot coming out to transition prior to their arrival. Mm -hmm. That way they can become very familiar with the systems and, and the uh, starting, the limitations, performance section. So I'll usually just go through a pre-flight with them, walk around. It's better to see firsthand, hands-on, and go fly with them. And most people are only taking about an hour to transition the, because of the similarity. Uh, afterwards, I sit down and we go through the POH together and, and answer any questions that they, they have. Well, i got to tell you, the, the thing that was immediate to me was, one, just a smooth rotor, just beautifully done. Uh, very R44-ish in so many ways, but just a little bit better in, in all the ways that count. Autos, boy, the big thing you've got to worry about there is is not overshooting. <laughs> That's correct. It does uh, does float like a Cessna, and 
But that's good because it gives you a lot of time and you can always maneuver, S-turn, slow it down, speed it up, whatever, whatever it takes to uh, hit your spot. Now, overall performance stats, uh, you know, we, we, we find the machine has a phenomenal sweet spot right at about 110. It's just been really great there. And, you know, that's 68, 70%-ish uh, torque-wise. Uh, what are you finding out operational parameters? What's the sweet spot for flying around cross-country this aircraft? Um, I found the best is between 70 and 75% on the torque. It still gives you, well, depending on your weight, um, 105, even up to 110 knots and you're not burning so much fuel so and it gives you a nice smoother ride so how are the initial 66 going to be meted out from here on out and where do we see this uh, production start really driving up uh well right now we're at two ships a week um, by the end of the year we'd like to go to four and then obviously bump it up to even more we have over 90 orders already um, air conditioning's in the, in the works because almost everybody wants that yeah. next project after that would be the uh fixed floats, pop-out floats version, and then eventually ENG and a police version. Freedom through performance. At Sirius, performance is not simply the measurement of a single design parameter. Rather, it's a total package. It's optimum balance of speed, efficiency, comfort, safety, ease of flight, and quality. We call it Sirius Flying 2.0. Aren't you ready to feel the freedom? Now the 66, the, the future of this, uh, this airframe and this program, uh, I know the crystal ball has been floated around a little bit now that this is, is done. It's been a process that you folks have talked about uh, carefully. Uh, you've taken the process uh, very slowly. And obviously it works because there's nothing I can really bitch at it through the aircraft at all. Of course, so early in the program, it's kind of amazing that that even takes place. But from what I understand, everybody's been very happy with, outside of a couple of seal issues. Yeah, I've uh, probably done 10 transitions so far and flown with another half dozen pilots and not one of them has had anything bad to say about it. They were just all in awe and just, just really loved it. Now this is also the launch customer for the RR300. Being a launch customer for any new power plant is usually accompanied by some teething issues along the way. How's that been for you so far, and how's Rolls uh, so far to work with? Uh, Rolls has been great to work with. They, we actually have a full-time tech rep um, uh, that has an office here, so if we have any questions at all, we can go to him. And as far as the engine goes, it's just been running beautifully. Between ship one, two, and three, we probably have over 600 hours total time and really no major problems, you know, a few seal leaks, but that's normal. Um, but other than that, no, it's just been, been running like a champ. Well, what are the conditions for somebody who's new to this? What are they going to have to be aware of in regards to the operating parameters with the RR300 and, this, and the 66? What are the things that they really need to avoid? Things they really need to avoid is uh, yanking that collective around, trying to pull in the power at the last minute. Yeah. Um, you can over-torque, you can over-temp. Um, and of course that's going to cost you a lot more money. Indeed. What's the best advice that you can give right now to somebody who's been flying a 22 or a 44 or a God knows what else piston or for that matter Brand X old uh, retread turbine that are looking at this aircraft? Where does it really shine right now? Um, right now it shines in the performance at altitude. Um, it'll hover at gross weight in ground effect up to 11,000 feet um, and the outer ground effect is right around seven or eight at gross. So the high altitude performance is really where it shines. Well, Doug, first of all, thanks so much for an excellent introduction to the R66. I uh, really appreciate the fact that you're very gentle with me and, and very kind under the circumstances and, and the lack of screaming just really boosted my confidence and I thank you so much. Okay, well, thanks.